Like actual cats. Like yeah. you throw my cat at me. I was teaching you defense. <laughs> <laughs> you never know like, when someone's gonna throw a cat at you, so you're welcome. Like I, had this, I had this cat named Fluffy, he was a big orange cat. He was like, he was like Pacho, but the black one. Everybody, welcome to the Anime Summit podcast. It's your favorite bitches again, but uh, we are minus a Nick this week again. So please, everyone, tweet at him and say, "Where are you at, you bitch?" I'm your favorite host. Well, one of your favorites, I hope. I hope I'm your favorite. Sam the bomb, and with me as always is the lovely Danny. Hello, everyone. Danny Cannoli. Danny Cannoli. Danny Cakes. <laughs> Danny 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 Hoot Nanny. Danny Hoot Nanny. Danny Ravioli. And with me today for our main topic, I have someone very special. Okay, before you say anything, listeners, I because I know you guys are yelling at me right now, is that had nothing to do with the fact that this guest is my cousin or family. Because if that was the case, he would have been on a long time ago. Okay. <laughs> this is this is important. Okay. This is important to this me. This is super important. So this is my cousin and my brother, my big big brother, Mario. Hello. He is on here today to talk about anime and how it was back in the day and how he got me into anime. And there would be no anime summit Sam if it wasn't for Mario. Okay, because I would not be into anime as much as I am if it wasn't for Mario. Saying, "Oh, hey, I got the DVD copy of this, so here's the VHS version of it," and then just giving me the VHS. Right, you're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. No, seriously, yeah. I still have them because I like to watch. <laughs> those were those were wonderful Christmases, by the way. I remember I got Tenchi Muyo and Tenchi in Tokyo, on damn near all the volumes, and Mario wrapped it in the shape of a cross. <laughs> he wow. taped all the VHSs together. I was like, "Oh, cool, a religious gift." It's fucking stupid. <laughs> and he was like, "No, just open it." Um, it, was, it was hilarious. Praise be the anime mm-hmm. gods. <laughs> yeah. Tenji Munyo was actually uh, my first manga that I purchased. When really? I was like oh. 12. Yeah. Yeah. Sh- it was, uh, it was called, I still have it. Um, it was called No Need for Tenshi. Yeah, yeah. No Need. That's, that's yeah. what it was called. No Need for Tenshi. So, so my cousin Mario is on here. Anyone who's a friend of me is a friend of my cousin Mario. So there you go. I'm everybody's you cousin. Go. You call me. So we're just going to. Like my cousin Vinny. <laughs> Basically, yeah, my, my cousin the two, Mario. The two Utes. <laughs> what? The, what? the Utes? The, the Utes. The Utes. Did you say Utes. Fred Goween as the judge, dude? It was so fucking <laughs> funny. Um, so we have a light news week this week because, you Thank know, God. whatever. Again. But um, we're probably going to end up saying this twice just because this episode is going to come out, like, afterwards, like, after the normal yeah. schedule. But, but um, Isao Takahata passed away. So and right sad. now it's... Right now, it's April 9th when we're recording this, okay? so It happened over out, the weekend. It happened over the weekend, and I think he was 70. He was... Oh, 82. 82. He was 82. Wow. Um, Misao Takahata is the Studio Ghibli co-founder, okay? And we just finished up our Studio Ghibli series, um, but he was the one who directed and wrote Grave of the Fireflies only yesterday, Pom Poco, my favorite, and my neighbor, the Yamadas, and he also did The Tale of Princess... Kaguya. Uh, Kaguya in 2013. That's um, beautiful. I hadn't actually seen it, but man, I saw that trailer and that was crazy. Like, you know, that's some of that old school animation that yeah. you really don't see anymore. Yeah. And that mm-hmm. was beautiful. It literally, like, it, it felt like you were, like, reading a storybook, like a children's storybook. That's yeah, it I wasn't felt. like, it wasn't because it's based off of an old <laughs> Japanese folktale, so it wasn't, like, super amazing, but just the spectacle it was. Yeah. It was, like, visual wise. I amazing. enjoyed it. I, yeah. I, I, I enjoyed watching that one. So. so excuse me while I dedicate the rest of April's episodes to uh, Takahata-san. Word. I love I love you, dude. You you gave me a lot of childhood stuff. You made me cry a lot um, and all that shit. And you made me happy and laugh. You made me laugh at raccoons, ball sacks. That's pretty <laughs> funny. That became parachutes. and That uh, became parachutes and, <laughs> and carpets and gliders. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think you lived a long time, and I think that's great. And he this lived one's a great you. life. He really, he, he did. really lived a great life. And his, 
his legacy will be known forever through his movies and his film. Right. For sure. For sure. So this one's for you. Yeah. And the, the, all those people that are going to come afterwards that will see his films. Because that's what, one of the things I love about animated films is that, you know, it's not just about we watch these and it's amazing, it's great, and we just love them. But all these people who get inspired and then they'll go off to do their own thing too yeah. or be animators or make movies or whatever. So. Yeah, it's like they'll last, come around, they'll be like, oh, I saw this film, that's what made me want to get yeah, into film. Yeah, last episode I kind of like, I had like a little bit of like a, a mind-blown moment because I, I mentioned that, you know, gener- the generation that Sam and I grew up on are getting a lot older and like a newer generation is coming into play, um, especially in cartoons. So, sure. like, Steven Universe, there's, like, some references for a Spirited Away and all that kind of stuff. So it's, like, really strange, especially for me when I see something like that. Like, in a kid's cartoon, they're making, you know, anime references, and people don't even know it. Yeah, that, Like, right. you know, for people who don't watch anime, so. Well, sure. the, or, like, the, the My Neighbor Totoro reference in Bob's Burgers. Yeah, that was hilarious. yeah. But it was a big turkey and not Totoro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Thanksgiving episode. But um, anyway, kind of then the, there's another piece of news saying that um, uh, what's his nuts? I forgot his name. Oh, Taika Waititi is still he confirmed with sources that he's still working on a live action Akira or he wants to make it happen. Now, I know we've talked about live action anime movies on here before. I don't want to say any more of it. OK, if you want to hear what I have to say, go <laughs> listen to the Ghost in the Shell episode. I like, mean, yeah with a black critic guy was guesting on that episode. Um, I actually went and saw that with Mario actually. So like, yeah, I still um, haven't seen Ghost like in the Mario. Shell. Mario, if you can really quick in like a minute or 30 right. seconds to say it, what did you think of that movie? The one thing I will, I will say that a lot, a lot of stuff and like a lot of the visuals stayed really true to the anime, which is always fantastic because I don't ever think that you should have to reimagine some of the things, especially if they're like classics you just need to bring them to another audience, you know. You just need to like a lot of people will see this because it's got Scarlett Johansson in it, and you know people are just gonna see it for Scarlett Joe alone. And um, but there's one thing that really bothered me about the whole thing because the spectacle was beautiful. I mean the the animation, the effects were great, but they didn't stay true to the whole idea of the ghost in the shell. It was more like, hey, let's put human brains and human minds and psyches, or whatever, into machines and everything. Transhumanism whole... and all that. Right, right, and not the idea of um, these compiling of like extra data and stuff that to make a new artificial life form, you know, and that was really cool. And that's what the whole ghost in the shell was random bits of information coming to make something new. Mm-hmm. Okay. So pretty it was good. All right. Five out of pretty seven. good. I, I love that. I love that. If you want to hear what, what me and black critic, I have to say, um, you can go to our YouTube, youtube.com slash anime summit. You should go subscribe. We are on Google Play and iTunes, but the following weekend we're also on the YouTubes. And I've been watching that subscriber number crawl up there, and we're about 400 and some change away from 2,000 subs. So if you get it to 2,000, I will give you a prize. I will give five people prizes if you get it to – I'm saying it right now. (laughs) Bitch. I will give five people prizes if you share that shit and get it to 2,000. If you get it to 2,000, I will have a boner. Anyway. You're not going to make me wear a dress again, are you? No. That okay. was one time. That <laughs> one was so time. I didn't feel alone going shopping. Because, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, and then follow us on Twitter, please, at Anime Summit. And then you can tweet at us all the funny memes and uh, hentai pictures and stuff like that. And then on the Twitter description and in the YouTube video descriptions, there's the link to the Discord. So you should come there and talk to us and talk to Danny and talk to Nick and everybody else and Quokka sometimes when he's awake, but he's in Korea, so nobody knows where, whenever he's awake. That being said... He should be awake by now. Actually, he's probably, yeah, he's probably just waking up now, probably eating some ramen because he's po. (laughs) But, um, um, so, of course, in true Anime Summit fashion, we always have the guests, if they're new, well, whether they're new or... A recurring guest. We have them pick the waifu of the week and husbando of the hour. So let's get into it. Mario, what did you pick? Um, so I'm gonna go a little old school, and maybe this is a little new school too. And it's actually kind of creepy now I think about it. But Asuka from Evangelion, you know, even though she's like 14 or whatever. <laughs> um, hey, no, I, in the third movie, I mean, she's yeah, like she's like a mortal, something. yeah, or yeah. whatever. 
But she looks and, like she's 15. Uh, but in my defense, yeah. I was like 16, you know, when I first started watching even Galleon and everything. And then you always love, fall in love with that, you know, strong female fit character type that, you Tight know. Tight stomachs. Yeah, that <laughs> helps, you know. <laughs> I'm not bad. I'm just drawn this <clears throat> way, you know. <laughs> okay, Jessica so, Rabbit. Right? Thank you. <laughs> oh, I love Jessica Rabbit. Does well, she count? Can I pick her now? I want to change my answer to Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> you can do whatever the hell you want, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is your episode. Um, uh, fun fact, me and Mario met Tiffany Grant, and I can't find the yes. picture of it anymore. But I have it uh, if you if you want to tweet it out sometimes. But, yeah, it's like that's yes, how much I just please loved, share it with me. loved her. And she even actually did uh, my – at the time when people actually did, you know, voicemail messages um, – I, she did mine and everything. She's like, oh, you're calling Mario's phone, but he's a real loser, so I don't know why you want to call him and some of that, and it was just really awesome. <laughs> yeah, she left That's a... That's pretty awesome. Yeah. She left a, um, a message as Asuka, yeah. Yeah. So, like, when you called it, yeah. But then, like, when Mario was looking for a job, he had to change it. Of course. So yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Gotta be professional. She, that sucks. Yeah, that's ha- that happened to me, like, when I started to, like, you know, become an adult. I, I My voicemail was like this stupid little like song from Bless the Fall that they did at the end of oh, um, which one song? of the albums. Purple Dog on a Sunday afternoon with my yellow duck. His name is Pooh. Yeah. I like to feed him <laughs> old dirty biscuits. <laughs> Cause I, I like that. to change. Or, oh, I forgot. Uh, change that was when Craig Mabbitt biscuits. was in the band, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. that was like a an extra song that they did, at, after like one of one of their songs. So it was like a hidden. It was like a joke. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Where it's a pay for like fifteen minutes before you get to it or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Mario, do you have a husbando? I mean, or did you not think of one? I didn't think because I was trying to think. It's like you know, you, you chase after the girls, you know. Um, but anything from like uh, Macross Plus, is Samu Dyson. You know, and that, you're going to hear that a lot for me tonight because that is like, if I had to pick my favorite anime of all time, it's going to be Macross Plus and for many reasons. So, Isamu Dyson. Okay, fine. Fine, be the way. Fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, bitch. Anyway, so let's get on to the main topic. Here's the reason I brought Mario on here, okay? So, everyone calm down. Smokey, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> so, here's the reason, okay? So, Mario, when I was a kid, okay, um... During, for the holidays, we would go over there, and Mario needed, you know, he was always, like, trying to keep me and Sudi busy. So he would put on, um, if we weren't playing the PlayStation, um, and I don't know how oh, he did Legos. that. He, he, would, he, would rip, he would rip PlayStation games and put them on DVD or CDR somehow, and we would play those. Or and or we would um No, I wouldn't. That's illegal. <laughs> Why would I, I mean, do that? Yeah, I mean, no, they were the actual games. Huh. Um, but uh, he would keep us busy by putting in a, he's like, hey, watch this anime. This is a cool show. You guys will like this. You like Dragon Ball, right? Here, watch this. Um, because you know when I was a kid, like, and I've said this before, like, I I watched Dragon Ball and Sailor Moon and Ronin Warriors on like UPN and like uh, and WB and stuff like that back in the day. And um, Mario obviously was into anime, into all kinds of anime. So we would go over there, and he would just put it in the VHS, and um, we watched Photon, Generator Gall. Which, like um, I've mentioned before, I mentioned Generator Gall in the show before, and um, that's how I got into Nadesco, and that's how it became my like one of my favorite animes of all your time. Your obsession. Yeah, basically. Yeah, my background <laughs> right now is actually you know, on my phone is Yuri, Captain Eureka Misumara. Yeah. Um, uh, blue haired waifu, but like, so the the reason why I I wanted Mario to come on is because, um. You know now, like Danny will be like Sam, read this manga. Sam, watch the show. And I can just get on my computer, on my PC, and just type in whatever, and I I'm, go on Crunchyroll or whatever, go on Daisuke.net, and find it, and watch it. You know what I mean? So like, it's very easy to be like, oh, like for Danny to send me a clip of a show on Facebook Messenger, on Snapchat or whatever, and I can just oh I'm at my I'm at Trisha's parents' house, but I'm gonna watch this clip real quick. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. back in Mario's time, it was very different, and um. It's not like Mario is like sixty years old or something. It's like no, Mario's, I mean not I'm not old. young yeah. <laughs> anymore, unfortunately. No. But but you know, oh, it's but, young at heart. Yeah. So where I used to, or where Mario used to get anime, or that I know of, is he used to work at a place called Suncoast Video at the Burnsville Mall, and Burnsville's where I grew up. 
And we would go there, and if my parents go to J.C. Penny or some lame ass store like that. I would JC I would Penny? hang out there with Mario because I wanted to watch anime. I didn't want to fucking try on shoes or watch my mom try on shoes. So like that's what I did. All right, all right, go to the arcade. So I so, was a babysitter even when I was working. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he would let me sit on the counter, and he would he put on he would put on Street Fighter Alpha the movie, and I I remember buying it to that day. Um, after watching it, but um, he probably got in trubs. Anyway, I did once. Let me tell you, there was one time I was playing an anime and everything, and it was like this one scene with this girl, and she was like a holographic projection, but she wasn't naked, but she also wasn't wearing any clothes. So, <laughs> my butt. <laughs> she wasn't bu- naked, but she was. <laughs> yes, but she was digital. It was fine. Like she, and then my boss, for whatever reason, decided to come in the store that day. And you just like I see him, and I see him look at the the TVs in front of the store, and then look at me, look back to TVs, come in the store, and he's like, "Turn it off right now." And I'm just like, "Yeah, whatever." And then like I, I turn it off, and and I was like, "Man, I'm surprised I did not get fired that day." <laughs> Thank God but, for that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I guess we have a set of questions, and um, but before that, Mario, why don't you go ahead and say like. In, in anime summit tradition again, we always ask new guests um, their favorite animes, uh, what your first show was, and what got you into it, and your dislike, like the anime you just or a franchise you dislike. Sure. Um, so one of my first animes that I ever watched was Robotech way back in the day, Robotech. and I'm actually if yeah Robotech. Oh my god. And um, <laughs> if if anything, I'm actually a second generation anime fan because it was my brother actually who got me into some of this stuff too and he kind of fed that kind of um, fun of anime and watching shows and taking me to movies or whatever so Robotech was really the big thing too and then back in the day on Sci-Fi Channel they used to have um, oh my god Midnight Anime I can't remember what it was called but they had this Midnight Anime block where they would play Vampire Hunter D Akira I um, watched um, Armitage 3 Armitage yep and um, I watched Fatal Fury the motion picture on that Yep. That midnight block, I remember that. And there was this one, like, you know how Fantasia was, like, uh, the Disney Fantasia was broken in, into different um, little shows, whatever. They had something like that called Robot Carnival. And it was this wonderful, like, just culmination of, like, all these little shows about robots and, like, you know, just fun things. There's, I got, um, have you seen it somewhere? It's, it's called, um, I, I saw it. the opening. The first, okay. the first one where it's like that big, huge robot like sand city. crawler. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, it's great. And there's this one, there's this one like episode or like part of it where it's like this American like genius or whatever comes over to Japan to fight with his giant robot, and he's just one person controlling this entire robot. And then a Japanese robot is like this big wooden thing, but it's controlled by like five different people, like the old Sentai like uh, Power Rangers kind of thing. And they're, like, trying to, like, see what he wants, and they can't translate his English because uh, he's speaking through a microphone. And, um, but it's just fun, really good animation, like the, that old school, like I would say, animation. Yep, there was, there was about eight different directors and about five different writers. And, mm. mu- and the music was done by Joe Hisaishi, who does a lot of uh, Studio Ghibli. But um, one of the directors of note is Katsuhiro Otomo, and he did Akira. So, Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you guys should watch Robot Carnival. It's legit. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. Um, and like I said before, one of my uh, one of my favorite shows was uh, as I started watching anime was Macross and anything from Macross. I mean, again, Robotech was um, three shows put together, and then Macross was the first part of that Robotech show, and it kind of made just like a different story. But Macross alone continued on in Japan through. Macross, uh, the movie Macross, do you remember love? And then Macross Plus was the one after that, and it was just this huge leap in like animation. Like they took tons of time to do this, and, I, and they did research and everything to get the plane mechanics right and the like, you know, dynamics. And it was just, it's just a beautiful anime, and it, and it feels very much like um, a story. Uh, like because a lot of animes have a, a standard story, and they kind of feel. I don't want to say the same, but you can tell it's an anime just because of the story sometimes. But Macross Plus very much feels like a like an American, more like Top Gun kind of like uh, show rather than um, like it was almost pandering to American audiences a little bit more. 
because it wasn't very stereotypical. And maybe that's why I liked it so much. Um, and it always stuck with me because, I, I mean, I've always been a big plane aficionado and, like, a, somebody who loved planes and everything. And the fact that they can transform the robots makes it even better because, you know, it's the right. big robot and who doesn't love that. Right. Um, but more recently, and I think I showed you Summer Wars – some and you did. I, I, I watched and I, it and I told you, you're like, you have to see this. Like, I bought it literally right after, and that's how I got into Mamoru Hosoda. Yeah, he's yeah, fan, he's fantastic. And like, I, I hadn't watched the anime in a while, or at least I wasn't as constant as it was because back in the day, it was like I needed this constant influx of anime, or I wasn't right in the world. And um, Summer Wars was like kind of my revival back into anime just because. One, Summer Wars has got that wonderful uh, family it's dynamic. So, cool. Yeah, it's so beautifully animated, and, and the whole family aspect of, uh, as like the movie progresses, is really heartwarming. Right. And you learn a little bit, a little bit about um, each of the family members, how they're connected and everything, yeah. and how he wants to be, and it's like, for him, that's the greatest thing ever, because he doesn't, his family's never there, and and they all band together, and that's the biggest thing. Is like family sticks together, they fight together, and and they had that common enemy, and it just. And even I, though the the kid, the main guy, wasn't really family, they they treated him like it because yeah. it was just like you're a part of this now. You're you're going through this with us. That means you're family. It's like, right. It's legit. And yeah. uh, and one reason, like I I was thinking of this movie too, is because there's not many times in my life that I've ever watched a movie or an anime where I literally stood up and cheered for someone like and it seems such like a cliche and dumb but like i was so moved by him having to do the calculations in his head and he's pushing in the keys as he's going getting the bloody nose and then like and i'm like oh my god he's doing it in his head he's gonna die like it's just this wonderful last second you know countdown and uh yeah it's, it's beautiful it's just beautiful i love it so, i love Summer that movie. Wars. yeah I, anybody I, my uh, an ex of mine who i dated he he actually gave me that movie for my birthday so and when i finally watched it because i never seen it i never even heard i never even heard of summer wars until he gave it to me so and when i watched it i, I was just like blown away from beginning to end and right then, it's just nonstop. yeah and then um at that time i was living with my uncle and um my then he was like my cousin, I want to say he was about five or, My cousin th- Mario. or three. <laughs> so, um, and I showed him Summer Wars and he fell in love with it too. And like he, every time he wanted to watch something like anime related, he would come up to my room and say, Danielle, can I borrow, can I borrow some movies? Can I borrow Summer Wars? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sure, Patrick, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's what makes it really good too is that it's so universal you don't yeah, have to like it's know it's very like anyone you can like anyone can watch it from like little kids to 65 80 year old people so right <laughs> yeah because my uh my girlfriend now i i've showed her some anime and she hasn't really watched a lot of anime and anything but she i was like you've got to watch this it's like and she just again she just pull you everybody whenever they watch them they pull something from their own life their own experience and that family um dynamic again just is such a big thing and she's like you can love it for that alone yeah you know you, mm-hmm. you don't that's, need to know anything about anime yeah that's kind of right. what uh when marnie was there was for me like that really touched me because um my grandmother passed away around that same year so oh, wow. when i found out when i found out that like marnie was um What's her name again? I forgot her name. Anna. Um, Anna, yeah. When, when I found out that Marnie was Anna's grandmother, that, like, hit me home. So I was just like, oh, my God. And and the guy that was with me who um, watched it with me, after after the credits were rolling, he's all like, are you okay? Because, like, I started, like, wiping, t- like, tears away from my face. I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, you know, this just reminded me of my grandma. And he's like, oh, my God. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So. Yeah, um, when Marnie was there, Mario was the, one of the last Studio Ghibli films. Oh, okay. It was not directed by um, Miyazaki, but it was in his son or something. No, it no, was. It was, it was the guy it, who who uh, di- who directed um, Mary and the Witch's Flower. Oh, okay. Yeah, his son did uh, Tales from Mercy and one other one, but 
Yeah, I never saw that one either. I, it Tales from Mercy is not good. It's not good? Because it's based on a book, a, a <laughs> series of books, and it's just like... Books are dumb, that's they why. They adapted it too straight up, so it was too boring. Like, they didn't... Okay. They didn't fit it for the big screen, you know what I mean? Wait, right, right. what are you talking about? I'm sorry. Uh, um, uh, oh, Tales, Tales of Earthsea. Oh, oh, right, yeah. okay. I yeah. don't know, I can't, like... I kind of liked it, but it wasn't, like, an oh my god moment kind of thing. Like, this is the best movie yet, like that. And sure. It didn't, it didn't really, like, set in stone for me. Like, it was good for, for what... Miyazaki's son did, mm-hmm. but he can definitely do better. Sure. So, so Mario, now what's your dislikes then? Uh, <laughs> so I know probably get a lot of flack for this, but and Gundam has oh, always been shit! <laughs> has always been like the bane of my existence, and not because it's necessarily bad. Um, again, I fell in love with Matt Cross and everything first, and they're always like the rival. They're always like the the opposite to Macross and Gundam always got so much more attention and I just like got so angry for it, you know, and I'm like, no, everybody needs to be watching Macross and it's honestly not even Macross's fault because of this whole litigation with Harmony Gold who owns Robotech and also owns Macross yeah, here in the States. Harmony Gold, dude. Right. And we can't get any more Macross here. So people really don't know what it, like how great it is and everything. I also, again, I liked how, a little bit more realistic Macross was. And um, the stories were just a little bit, I, I liked a little better. You know, the whole um, the idol and the guy protecting the idol. And there was music too. And Macross is a lot about music. And that's what I always loved. And it always had really good music, especially uh, even even in Macross Delta that I did not like as much had great, great music to it. So there's always something, you know. They went a little too yeah. much to the idol side of it. Um, but again, Gundam just seems like I don't want to say convoluted, but it's just they have these really cool mechs and everything, but they always I don't know they always push too far on like that um, uh, suspended disbelief and everything, and I'm just like I don't really like it, even though I love Big Robo, and it's just it's weird. So right, Gundam. So I think. Even though that is our anime summit tradition of what do you like, what do you don't like, whatever, that's already kind of like we're already kind of in the main topic a little bit, which is Marma. <laughs> uh, my my cousin, my big brother Mario. Um, the longest time he couldn't say my name, that's why I said Marma. No, I'm just kidding. Marma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just call him that now because it's fucking funny. It's like I don't even know where you came up with that. Like I don't either, but it's funny. So shut up. <laughs> your name is Marma. It's your name <laughs> from now on. Forever um, legally binding. Legally binding. Um, so, I think you kind of already said that, like that was Robot Carnival, and Macross. Those were the animes that kind of made you like got got get into it. Like obviously, obviously, like were they they weren't your first though, right? Or what was your first? Um, because technically my first was like Dragon Ball and right, Sailor right. Moon. No, I really do think you know Robotech was my. first first and everything because our brother, your but, brother. yeah but yeah. um you know transformers the 1984 movie wasn't really or 1986 movie really wasn't anime but man it was that next step up to like animation that when they take the time and they do things like uh like movies and everything and push a little farther that was like american anime and i you know i was really hopeful but and American like animation now is just too, or has always been, you know, episodic and just too much. Like, let's put as much as we can out so we can sell toys and so we can sell advertisements. You know, where anime was this wonderful, like it was a story. They just chose animation as their format. You know, like mm-hmm. they were just trying to tell a story, and like, and it was a little bit easier to do, like obviously special effects in a, in a movie back in like the eighties. You know, they're not that great. You know. Um, but with anime, you could do anything. You could literally do anything that you could draw, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, I and, think that's uh, why a lot of people liked Avatar, because that was yeah. not that kind of cartoon. That was like you had to, you know, it went in order. It was a story, right? And um, I think that's why a lot of people like Steven Universe too now, because Steven Universe, even though that can be episodic, there's a a progression of story, right? 
in Steven Universe as well. But, Although um, it kind of worries me with like Steven Universe. Steven Universe is great. I love Steven Universe, but like, are our attention spans that horrible that we had to only get eleven minutes of a story every time? Like, uh, I I just feel like they're just trying to like you know, kind of put little snippets out where like you know Steven. If you watched the whole episode of Steven Universe, like if it was like half an hour, I feel like you'd do more with it. But I think it's not supposed to be such a story filled like thing it's just supposed to be like let's watch him do fun things for a little bit you know right right but. so so definitely Matt Cross then that's like here. yeah Matt Cross um, the movie specifically because do you remember you know, love do you remember love yeah the first movie that came out because it was basically just like a retelling of the 24 episodes or whatever it was for the uh, the season of the TV show um, because again it's like when you just take the time to make a movie it's just so much better, you know, and yeah. there's so much more detail and everything and just smoothness of the animation and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, those were definitely like one of the big ones. And um, what was it? I remember I can't remember what it was, but like when they were advertising like Akira and Vampire Hunter D and, you know, those kind of things on sci fi, it was like animation like you've never seen it before oh my god i remember like, that yeah. <laughs> yeah i remember yeah. that sci-fi did that um fuse tv did that they sure. they had like a little uh anime hour or whatever um stars did it as well so see i, I didn't have all that when i was a kid because I, I was pow i'm so sorry <laughs> i'm just kidding i was, we <laughs> poor, I was a rich but, kid no. yeah but i wasn't my, my parents weren't trying to pay Eighty nine ninety five for all them extra shiz. I know. You get a pair of bunny ears and you get whatever you can get in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I mentioned earlier that um, Mario worked at uh, Suncoast Video. So Suncoast Video was a video store, like, you know, because back in the day we had those. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you can now we have like Now we have, like, Best Buy and you can get movies at Target and Walmart or whatever. And um, But back then we had, like, Suncoast Video, West Coast Video. Sandy. We had – we had Sam mm-hmm. Goody. Um, now we still have FYE, and the Burnsville Mall, well, where me and where Nick lives, there's still an FYE there. But um, where I'm from in in the Great Northeast, there is no longer an FYE. It is very rare that you will ever see an FYE um, in the New Jersey, New York, New York area. So. The last time I was at FYE, they have a whole wall of pop figures, which is awesome. But their whole they have a, and they have a whole they have a shit ton of anime and a bunch of clearance anime which is great, but they their like main anime section is like all like Attack on Titan Tokyo Ghoul, mainstreamy stuff. So it's like so, a hot topic with anime. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, hot topics and main anime or, stuff is I mean, Tokyo with Ghoul. DVDs. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, so like at Sunko's video. Is that like mainly? I know that's where you got a lot of your anime from because I have the VHSs. I that still have some of the Suncoast stickers on them. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, they have the price tags on twenty six ninety nine. Oh my god! For a yeah. VHS tape with three episodes on it. Yeah. What the fuck? That is, that is ridiculous. <laughs> like the DVDs were thirty bucks too, and like. Oh yeah. God, it was bad. Yeah. I still have and some T shirts that I purchased at Suncoast. <laughs> I have a no face hugger that I got, a plush face hugger that I got from Sunco's, and I'm never giving it up because it's amazing. <laughs> and it, I, the, the fingers, like, can uh, you can like mold them so you can just like wrap it around your face so and just leave they it have there. like they have like wire in them, yeah. so you can like adjust them. Yeah. I have, um, I still have a Cowboy Bebop T-shirt, and then nice. uh, I love anime. Oh, oh no, is it I love anime? It's either I love anime or like. Yeah, no, it says I love anime, and then in like parentheses it says otaku underneath. Those were my two <laughs> memorable purchases from Suncoast, along with like some uh, DVDs that I got there as well. Sure. I got VHSs, and I got two Gundam figures. There, yeah. Gundam Wing. They were Gundam Wing. One was Gundam Ultron, and the other one was Gundam Heavy Arms Custom. It was legit. Um, so, I mean, other than there. Where you got your tapes and DVDs at the end, I'm sure. And then um, you got manga there too, right? Right, yeah. They started selling that. They actually started selling uh, New Type, uh, the American version. Yeah, the first at Suncoast. <laughs> and I have, I legitimately have like uh, a bunch of those New Types. So if you want to give a nice prize, I got them 
here they're like in pretty good condition you can give them away i'd be willing to donate to you guys so you can give it as a prize oh dude awesome. super, That's awesome. you know yeah. what though don't give away the one fun fact mario was actually in one of those oh right magazines. so when i used to cosplay a lot back in the day um they you know there would be photographers for new type and they would go around conventions taking pictures and uh i just happened to get one of them because i would buy the 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 magazine i'm like where am i where's the conventions okay okay is it where is it where am i where am i <laughs> like looking for yeah, it yeah. i was like oh i wasn't in this episode <laughs> but yeah that was um it was just kind of nice and then i'll keep that one of course forever but um so i guess my question is is like so like a lot of um people who have crunchyroll accounts you know now they can watch Japanese animes, even if they don't come here to America, you know what I mean. Right, it's super um, easy to get anime now. Right, and now Netflix is even hopping on some of those. Like, you know, we know this is not going to come to America, so let's hop on this one and get get right. it on Netflix. Um, Violet Evergarden, by the way, is now on Netflix. People, so you yeah. should watch it. <laughs> um, um, but so how did you do that though? Like, if there was an anime you knew that wasn't going to come here. How did you get a hold of them? How did you wa- how were you able to watch those? I mean, there's a so at the time there was this whole group of like um, anime copy VHS copiers. Like they would actually, and if you know anything about VHS, like back then when you make copies of copies, the the uh, quality gets worse and worse. Yeah, yeah, and, it goes down. yeah, the yeah. Lions and, and the fuzzies and yeah. Right, and I I have happened to get like a uh, VHS copy of End of Evangelion through somebody who actually worked with at Suncoast because he had connections somewhere, and um, he's like, oh yeah, here it's twenty five bucks for this VHS and this like janky like plastic you know shell and like a uh, photocopied uh, cover. And I got in and watched it. And it was almost unwatchable, but like it's the only way I could see End of Evangelion at the time because there was no DVDs. There was no like they weren't bringing it over. It was like you know, well, because it didn't end. You you wanted to see it, you know, yeah. like yeah. I and actually have End of Evangelion on tape as well. You probably have the copy I have, or did I? Is that the copy I gave you? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, you know what it is. That little. <laughs> My death and rebirth <laughs> copy is also one you gave me too. Nice. Yep. But uh, so yeah, I mean that was one of the only ways that you could get it and everything. Um, eBay was another great source, but man, those prices were always like super high. Way I think eBay up. back in the day was a little more janky too. Yeah, right? that too. Like, you don't well, know who still, you're sending your it was money. Still new at that, like yeah. it just started, so it's mm-hmm. not. At, right. It wasn't as efficient as it is now. Right. Mm-hmm. There was no PayPal really either yeah. at that time, and. Like, you'd be sending money off hoping that you get something. <laughs> like, you don't know. And, um, <laughs> but, yeah, so that was another way that you do it. Um, conventions back in the day were another big way to see to just see anime because they would have viewing rooms of all this anime from fan subbers and people who would, like, uh, digitize a lot of the uh, footage and then sub it and everything. And that was, like, a great reason to do conventions because there you could see stuff that you're not going to see on a normal basis. Um, so me and a bunch of friends would all go, and we'd watch, like, everything. We'd just, like, be hopping. Like, we'd stay up all through the night watching anime in these little rooms with these other nerds like us, you know. And uh, it was just wonderful because it, it brought us together because we all knew we were all there for the same reason. You know, we're all here just to watch anime, and we knew this was the only way to really get it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That's why I love conventions. Like, going right. to conventions just for that and just to, like, talk to people. So, even the past convention that I went to, it wasn't, like, it wasn't an anime convention, per se, like how New York Comic Con is, where it's, like, both American comics and, and anime combined where it's like a 50-50 thing. It was more on the American comic side. So, but I love to support um, the artists, like at, at their artist alley. And I just so happened to like be start become really good friends with one of the artists that was vendoring there. So that was like a good thing for me because I'm new to South Carolina. So, because I don't have that oh, many friends sure. down here. So I'm just all like, no. <laughs> I don't have any friends. Have any friends. That's what the internet's for. Everybody comes to you. You don't even have to move. I know. Yeah, and anyone that's anyone who's Discord in front of me is, is in front of my cousin Mario. <laughs> right. But you're right. I mean, that's exact perfect reason to go to conventions. You know, it's like that like-minded people. Just we're gonna find you know uh, the the people who'll get you. you yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, but 
again, like I said, back in the day, it was also like this wonderful place to get a lot of Japanese merchandise that you can't get can't, anywhere yeah. else, yeah. you know? Um, I have uh, art books from like Tenchi Muyo and El Hazard and all these things that, yeah, you can get on eBay now. I mean, I'm sure it's really easy. I mean, or you can, can find... Yeah, anything that it was so hard to find in the 90s is probably most likely super easy and you can get it off of Amazon. So. Right, there's a there's yeah, a seller now somewhere. It's probably, now it's probably expensive as shit, though. Yeah, like, or they have from, like a be, like another like a different edition because you know they they tend to do that deluxe edition yeah. five hundred yeah. yeah turbo plus two alpha <laughs> the movie the game second coming five <laughs> revengeance <laughs> revengeance <laughs> revenging yeah. the revenger the revengeance five part one. Redux. Redux. <laughs> yeah, Redux. <laughs> <laughs> oh but, man. But I mean, they're so, smart though, because back in the day, when you're when you're a kid or whatever, or you're younger, you have tons of expendable cash, and you can just like they'll drain you dry, you know. Oh hell yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So I mean, that's so even Mario, today. Like, like they'll drain you dry, <laughs> even now. That's why I don't go conventions cause now, anymore. Because now, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's even more like they're draining you dry because now there's like the little portable credit card swipe thing. So oh right, like yeah, the little square, the, the, the you put it on your phone. Yeah, yeah. everything's right. electronic now, so now it's even more easier to hey you Mario, want to go take upstairs? Money. <laughs> Isn't uh, the dealer room upstairs? Yeah, then no. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll stay over here. Well, for a long um, time afterwards, I mean, going to conventions was just uh, cosplay and you know get that attention or whatever, but. Yeah, well, anime, anime detour just happened here in Minnesota, and my niece went um, to I'll, it for the first time. Sorry, I just gotta say that. Really? That's like awesome. My niece Kia, she's like eleven and everything. Did she never, really go? Did she really? Yeah, her dad took her and everything, and then like we're getting pictures all through the night. Like she's sitting next to Black Panther, T'Challa, and everything, and she's just geeking out and everything. It's oh like, my see, god! It what does she dress up as? She wasn't dressed up as anything, oh, but she saw oh. T'Challa and uh, the Black Panther, and um, her name is Nakia. And in the movie Black Panther, there was that one girl called Nakia or whatever. Right, so it's about right. the same way. So she's all like, yeah. She's like freaking went, out. Yeah. Like, yeah. you have the same name. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it that's starts. That's amazing. You know? Dude, Nakia is so fucking like, she's a little badass. Like she yeah. will, she has no fear, that little girl. Right. She um, doesn't but take I, crap for anybody. But go ahead. Um, Mario took me to Anime Detour for my first time, me and my girlfriend at the time. I broke uh, in, t- in 2005. <laughs> And we went on the last day, so like there was just like a lot of stuff that was already, because it was cheaper. It was yeah, like the last day is usually where everything goes on sale. But the dealer room was sick, though. I was like, I've never seen it. Like back in the day, I used to go to Mario's house, and he would have all these figures, and I'd be like, Whoa! Yeah, yeah. Like, like, you know, all this stuff. <laughs> that shit ain't at Target or Toys R Us. What the fuck? Like I got my connections. And Mario had all these. Mario had like all these models, and he had this. This Mega Man X figure that I'm, I was like, oh my god! Oh, actually, it was a model I think that he put together, and yeah. I was, and it was amazing. It was every time. Now, like you know, I can get on like AmiAmi or eBay right. and find stuff. Like I got a, I have a copy of uh, Super Robot Tyson on Super Famicom, and I got it for six dollars. You know wow. what I mean? Like I can just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 one of the, one of the, it's one of the. Ones that's not as rare, but sure. Um, but still, I mean, you got on Famicom for God's sakes, right? So back in the day, you know, like that stuff was like when you went to a convention and you saw the dealer room and people had all this Japanese stuff, you were just like, "Fuck yeah, cool!" It's like, "This is awesome!" Like, you know, I can get it right here. That's how my brother got Kingdom Hearts Final Mix because the first Final oh, Mix sure. wasn't available here. Um, and uh, my friend Chris, you remember Chrissy? Like, dude, shout out to Chrissy. She bought it for my brother. She was just like, really? I'll buy it for you. <laughs> she paid she paid like fifty but sixty dollars for it. She was just like, Damn. I'll buy it for you, Sudi, because I love Sam and Sam's amazing, and I'm just gonna buy it for you because you're Sam's brother. And he was just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, dude. She was cool like that. She she did a lot of stuff. That's what like happened that. with but, me with with some of, sorry with some of my figures that I got at the previous con down in South Carolina. But well, they're just like, they'll all buy for you? It was like just, no, not even that. <laughs> I don't even have a brother. I'm an only child, so. <laughs> but my friend that came with me, you know, um, we, the first day we walked in and he's all like, all right. Because my birthday 
was is in the same month so and my birthday passed by the time the con was there so and he's all like okay so for a birthday present um i'll buy you anything that's here and I'm all like, oh, okay. Like, I, I like, straightened up that's and everything. That's dangerous. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's yeah. why. I, I was just, in my head, I'm like, oh, no. Like, you shouldn't have said that. So, <laughs> <laughs> and um, and there there was, like, this one uh, area where I got, like, these really cool steampunk gla- uh, goggles. And he was going to pay for them. I said, oh, no, you're not going to pay for these. You're going to pay for something else. He's all like, oh. <laughs> and the ca- and and the vendor was all like, "Oh, she got you there, man." <laughs> You're so, just like, "I'm gonna take advantage of the situation." Yeah, one hundred. And, right. and and there was um, there was another. Uh, we went to an artist, and I wanted to pay for like two pens or whatever, and um, he like I was pulling out my card and he had cash on him, so he just gave the guy cash. I'm all and and I was like, "God damn it!" In my head. And I'm and I told him I was like this doesn't count. This isn't my birthday present. <laughs> yeah, I, I was gonna pay for this. <laughs> so he's like, okay, okay. So, so Mario, you say you used to you used to cosplay a lot, right? Yep. I I fucking know that. I'm just asking. Yeah, the we ask it like you didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mario, I don't know you. So, even you're my family. Yeah. Um, so how old so, you know? <laughs> so like, um. Would you say going to conventions back then, even when you took me that first time in 2005, is different than going now? Yeah, so the last convention I went to wasn't, again, wasn't like an anime convention. It was uh, Wizard World that was here in Minneapolis. And um, I don't know, like after you go so many times, it kind of loses the mystique. And uh, like when I, and I think also anime, like again, conventions have kind of lost that like appeal a little bit, at least for me and ideas like you, you used to go there to see things that you can't see. Like it was very much, I mean, yeah, you can still meet people and get together with people, you know, and just have a fun time. It's just like a big old party. It's great, but it's not as special as it was when you, you were younger. Cause you're still riding that high, you know, when you were younger watching anime and everything, you just want to consume, consume as much as you can. And you get to a point where like you're just your taste changes or like, you know, you're looking for something specific or you've seen a lot of stuff like not to harp on any anime now, but some of the stuff and this is with anything, honestly, like with movies, and everything, everything just gets recycled after a while. You know, there's just there's a loop and you'll see see the same, kind of same things. And I can only watch so many like stories about some boy in high school who gets superpowers or whatever, you know, it's just and then you just kind of hang on to those those things that were special to you at the when you first started watching it, not that again, not that things aren't great. It's just that you, you get a little more choosy, you know? And, uh, so conventions are, they're kind of hard for me to go. I, I, I totally will, uh, push people to go to them. Cause like, you've got to experience it. You've just got to see it once. It's just fun to people watch, you know, and see all these really cool costumes. And if you ever can cosplay, I mean, just the attention you get is just such yeah, you become what they call it like a cosplay whore. You just kind of like you just want or a photo whore. You just want to get people to take your picture because it feels so good to be validated and to get like that attention, you know. So hell yeah, hell yeah. I want to take so, one day. At, like I wanted to my cousin because when I lived Mario. with him, not my cousin Mario, <laughs> my cousin Patrick, <laughs> <laughs> my cousin Patrick. Um. I, I was the one who got him into uh, video games and, like, anime and stuff like that and, and drawing and, like, how he is today, like, how he is today. So, and there was there was a couple times where I went to New York Comic Con and um, the one year that New York Comic Con decided to change their um, ticket system um, where now they don't have... Uh, four day or three day passes anymore. You have to buy, you have to buy the passes individually now, which is really it's lame. weird. Yeah, it's yeah. really lame, and it's like ten times more expensive. So, of and around that time, my cousin kept telling me, like, "Can I go to Comic Con with you this year? Can I go to Comic Con with you this year?" And in my head, I'm all like, "Oh my god, I really want you to come, but..." It's so fucking expensive right now, and I don't know if I'll be able to do that. So, so, so your, your Patrick's Mario. Yes. 
Yep. I am Patrick's Mario. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. There can be only one. There can be, there only, be one. only one. <laughs> so, so Mario, now I'm gonna, we're going to get into the funny questions that Danny wrote, okay? Okay. These I- questions will probably either make my listeners think you're amazing or they might <laughs> fight you. <laughs> That's a lot to um, put on me. Uh, Danny, you want to ask? Yeah, them? I'll go ask ahead. Them. You because these are good. Like I was like, oh shit. I need um. To okay. So the first one is, what anime character would you say has the same personality traits that you do? Oh. <laughs> um. I'm trying to think of how I view Mario as it, and like what anime you know, character I would view him as. Yeah. No. And like you can like immediately like I start thinking about the cool characters that you really enjoy watching and everything. But like then you, if you seriously think about it, like I'm I'm nothing like that. I just want to be like that or whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, you know who uh, I always admired and everything was uh, Kaneda from Akira. Mm-hmm. And. Um, Tetsuo! <laughs> yeah. Tetsuo! <laughs> um, just because, like, he he was kind of like, um, I, I won't say I was a loner in high school, but I was just kind of kept to myself. And but and he had his little, like, biker gang or whatever. But he, and even though, like, he had, he really didn't like Tetsuo, he was still part of the game gang, and he would do whatever it took to, you know, uh, protect him and everything, even when he was going, like, crazy blobbish and, you know, and everything was going to shit. Um, he was always like a really fun character and, you know, I, I would do a lot for my family. I would do a lot for my friends and, uh, that's always important. And, and to go back to like some wars too, family is always really important. Yeah. Um, um, but to say like that, I'm like any of these anime characters. I don't know. Like, cause you, you can see, it's kind of like one of those things where you can just see parts of people in certain characters or like, you know, parts of yourself or who you aspire to be and everything. And, um, I don't know. I, I I definitely would say there's there's a lot of a lot of characters that I really admire and inspire to, but to say I'm one of them that that would be hard to pick to be honest. Yeah. I, I think do. Mario's I think Mario's like Kenshin Himura. Because like <laughs> Man, that's a lot. That's uh He's like really compassionate and like really cuz Mario's like the kind of person to me anyway and to anybody who's friends with Mario is like um like, if I got up at 3 in the morning and I had a nightmare about something or I was scared or I was going through something, if I ran over to, like, where he lived right now and knocked on the door, he would open it for me and let me stay mm-hmm. there. Like, for whatever reason. <laughs> because it doesn't matter what time it is for me. You know what I mean? Like, it never has. So, like, but then, like, and he's funny. He's also hilarious. That's uh, another Haven't thing. I proven that already? Thank you. No, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> but um, also, like, Mario gets serious when he's supposed to. But he would do it in a more calm manner at first. And then um, Mario's kind of like if you push him there, then he'll go there. You know what I mean? Right. Kind of. That's 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 what I mean by it. And you make like, me cry, man. That's, that's really nice Aww. of you. Thank you. A uh, little touch, a little soft spot. <laughs> do you want some, some tissues, brother? Well, because I'm the youngest of my family, so I never had, you know, younger brothers. I was always the youngest of my family. And you were, yeah. yeah I was too. And when Salmon his brother came around. Um, it was like, they were like my little brothers, you know, and like, I got to have fun with them. I got to teach them things, you know, I got to show them the things that I thought was cool. And, you know, see and how break our Legos and break your Legos. Cause you didn't build them well and throw cats at me. Learn about yeah. engineering. <laughs> like, like actual cats. Like yeah. you throw my cat at me. <laughs> I was teaching you defense. <laughs> you never know like, when someone's going to throw a cat at you. So you're welcome. <laughs> I had this cat named Fluffy. He was this big orange cat, and he looked like he looked like Pacho, except all the black parts were orange. And he wasn't declawed. And Mario would just be like, "Bram!" <laughs> 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 oh my god, that's so terrible. Shit was funny. No, it was hilarious. Yeah. But um, I, I I would say like I guess Mario can't pick an answer, so I I answered for him. My bad. But that's a, no, that's, that's okay. Fine. I mean, but I can't be that, objective, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, that's the same thing with me. Um, recently, a friend of mine told me that he. Uh, I reminded him of Toru from Fruits Basket. Because oh. Yeah, but you also love Fruits Basket. Not, <laughs> shut up. That's not even <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. You are kind of like Toru from Fruits Basket. Actually. Like, I'm very selfless. I, I make sure that people, um, ha- like, 
have what they need if they need help. You know, I'm yeah, you're kind of you're kind of momish like I'm that. I'm a very yeah, I'm very mom. <laughs> I'm very I'm I'm always in mom mode, especially with Trevor. <laughs> yeah, Trevor in the Discord, yeah. <laughs> so um so uh the next question, oh, yeah. Um the next question is do you think you'll ever stop watching anime? Uh no, no. I mean it's just <laughs> it's one of those things like it's kinda like a dumb but that's question, what, but <laughs> right like <laughs> Because, well, you know, you watch anything that's good, like anything right. that is that inspires you, that moves you. Like I just I had stopped watching anime like religiously uh, probably back in like 10 years ago. Maybe I just it just it weaned off, you know? so. Yeah. Yeah. And you just because I don't know, you find other things to do, you know, um, I started writing, you know, or I uh, I definitely fell out of it. Yeah, I think we you all know. did. Like, there's there's usually that one point that that certain point in your life where it's all like, okay, like I need get I get, need to get my life rolling. So like, I need to start like doing <laughs> right. something else for a change. Right. Like, well, you so. know, like the, I mean, obviously, because like throughout the episode, we talked about how Mario consumed it right back then when he was really into it, and Mario listens to my podcast um, because he's awesome like that. But yeah. like, I've been trying to get him to watch other things but now i'm just trying to pick the things i know he'll like right and i'm trying also trying to pick things that i know that he'll watch with his girlfriend because um she is like really like for just anything mario wants to do which is amazing she's kind of like she has her own mind let's just put that out there it's just like yeah yeah she's kind of like trisha in that way where she'll be like oh what do you do what is this like i want to what are you watching right it's like oh okay and i'll show it to you or i think you'll like this so i think they just watched or mario just I, i don't know if she watched it with you but um they just watched Made in Abyss. Oh yeah, we watched it together. Oh my we god, I love that. Just I love that show. destroyed us. Like no way were we prepared for those last like two episodes. Yeah, and I'm I just know. like, yeah. yeah, what the hell? That yeah. was like that was a real curveball that they did. I was just all like, Whoa. right. They that brought in. you to places that you probably didn't want to go. Yeah. <laughs> right. like, yeah. And when you can be like that mood and everything, like, and when you see it coming too, and I'm like, no, 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 yeah. don't do that, like. <laughs> And and immediately like and and you know the funny thing is not to give spoilers but when um, Mitty died or whatever and um, she it was the thing that it didn't even get me like knowing that was gonna happen and I was leading up to her but when you saw the blanket and all her favorite toys and everything and she was in the middle that's what just like set off the tears and I'm just yeah. like my God yeah because it looked like a it looked like a funeral yeah it looked like a pretty funeral which is kind of sad like. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and that's what I'll search for. That's why I'll never stop watching anime because I know there are going to be moments like that throughout them. It's just I got to be a little more choosy because I don't have as much time anymore either. You know. Right. But, right. So, so um, what anime was better than you expected? There's another one Danny wrote. Um, one of the things that comes to mind right away is uh, Photon. Um, uh, and it was this anime that I just picked up out of a whim like because when we get shipments at Suncoast we would just get these like uh, boxes of anime and we had to go through them find out what the part, uh, what genre they are and then we'd always separate the anime and I would be like the first one oh to get through God. there so I'd be, I, remember, I remember seeing a clip of this show <laughs> sorry I looked it up and <laughs> no that's okay it's it's like and it's one of those things where like I bought it and I held on to it for like a month or two like I just like oh I want it sometimes oh it looks kind of weird but because uh, I used to like just buy anime I didn't care what it was I would just buy it yeah and because I got the discount you so I'm ju- saving money and not money. only that you would judge a book by its cover and be like oh this looks cool so I'll buy this right right so anybody that says you don't judge a book by the color of cover is lying so <laughs> yeah I saw it and I'm like oh this is kind of interesting and everything and it was just one DVD and it was six episodes and it was like an OVA and. I finally watched it. My brother was over and was like, hey, you want to watch some anime or whatever? He's like, yeah, sure. And it's like, oh, I picked up. I've been meaning to watch this. Let's watch this. And then we just watched it straight through. And it was, like, super funny. Like, just not typical. Um, we we still quote it to this day and everything. And there's there's these uh, little minions that they have. And they're called... Uh, um, oh, shit. Now, this is... Be- um... Papa Chan was the name of the guy, but they're called. Oh, this is gonna kill me. Okay, but anyways, there's just little minions and everything, and there's like they all had numbers and they look exactly Pochis? the same. Poch, uh, Pochini, 
po- something like that. I'm reading, yeah, I'm reading it right here. Yeah, yeah, poetry. Yeah, and um, and they were just funny because like it was ridiculous, so off the wall, kind of like a fooly cootie, and um, this was before fooly cootie, and um, and it was just so ridiculous, but it was so full of like just love and heart at the same time because we're like, fooly cootie was like funny and just ridiculous the whole way through this was like funny ridiculous but i had that element of sci-fi and just like um a warm relationship and the ending always kills me and it's just so funny and i won't ruin that for you because if anybody gets a chance it's like one of the one of my personal favorite animes i've ever seen like oh uh, when we there. went over there for easter i watched we watched <laughs> the first episode of it and then we had to go upstairs and eat but yeah it was he's the guy the main character photon yeah Photon, Photon Earth. Earth. Yep. He's like ridiculously strong. And his the weapon that he carries around is not really a staff. It's more like a It's an eye beam. It's like yeah. literally like girder from like a building. It's yeah, an I beam. It's, it's a pillar, yeah. It's like a, a thinner pillar. But yeah. Yeah. And it's he's he's funny. got like these superpowers and everything. And so does his uh friend who she can like stop time and but like they don't they don't know why. And they they explain it all later. Um, but they just like do all this stuff and her whole purpose is just like to go meet this like troubadour, this like singer and everything. And she's stolen like ancient relics and so that, and he's got to go back and get her. And they're like childhood friends and it's just fun. It's like, I can't say enough good things about it, but it's just ridiculous. Hmm. And yeah, six episodes, six episodes. So what anime describes your life is the last question. Um, Again, I think we've touched upon this a lot, actually. Um, uh, Summer Wars, again, is like really uh, – I, I can't say enough good things about it. Again, that's definitely was my revival back into anime. and um, For sure. I was just like, oh, they're doing gr- like these awesome things again. Like, I Again, I felt like um, when I first started watching anime again, it was like, this was amazing. Like, is this what it is now? Like, cause I had been out of the scene for a while and, um, but I think also, again, it just touched a part of me because I come from a Hispanic family. Uh, some, you know, half Hispanic, half Asian and everything. And those sometimes a lot of those families are very interconnected that way, you know, and we, um, my mom was taught us, you know, family first, you got to like, you got to focus on that and everything. And the way they banded together, like is something that I, I always hope that if I ever have a dire situation, if I ever have anything that those people will be there for me and that I'll be always be, um, okay because I have a support group, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so definitely, I mean, that's describes, I mean, that describes, again, that describes anybody's life. I really think, but, uh, if we if we want to talk about like what I wish my life was again, it goes huh. back to anything like Macross or anything like that because that's just super cool to me. Any sci-fi stuff, I'm a big sci-fi guy. That's that's what I always look for, you know. Um, and I always feel like there's never enough sci-fi stuff. There's always a lot of fancy, you know. But mm-hmm. we could do with more sci-fi stuff, I think. Okay, Mario. <laughs> I think I had a lot of fun tonight, and I kind of you think, think you had a lot of fun. I think maybe. <laughs> I should bring you on here more often. Um, um anytime anyway, you want me, man. Okay, uh, perfect. Sounds good. Um, so here's the thing. Uh, I always try and let our guests know, or let our listeners know, where the guests, where they can you. find you. So, like, if they want to bother you with questions or anything else, or if you have anything that you want them to subscribe to or follow you on Twitter or whatever – Go. Oh, so I'm not big on social media, but I do have a YouTube channel, um, Studio Revive. I do um, I play a lot of Final Fantasy 14. I've actually made a few uh, um, videos. Like I'm doing like a little story videos and everything. I haven't done some in a while, but I'm looking to get back into that. Um, following a character named Kimani. Uh, it's kind of fun. It's kind of off the wall. If you if you want to see what I look like in real life and in cosplay, you can. I'm. <laughs> we do a little flash to a live action thing there. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I'm always around. If you need to get contact with me, you can, uh, talk to Sam and he can always get a hold of me. So I can, uh, I can, I know yes. where he lives. He has, he has a direct line right to, uh, <clears throat> my brain. 
and uh, uh, there you go. So that's th- there's Mario. I like wanted to bring him on because before, I think that's... before that, what what anime do you? Oh yeah, recommend? before. What would you recommend to people to people oh. listening? Um, other than the what stuff I've said so far, um, some of my other real like all time favorites are like um, El Hazard is uh, an old. Oh God, I remember seeing mon- the bo- the comic books of that at Shinders. Right, and I never it's read a, it. It's kind of like oh God. It's hard to explain. It's. Uh, it's like, you know, um, being teleported into another world and um, having special abilities in that world. There's this one. So the main character gets teleported into this world, but also his teacher and his best friend and his, like, rival enemy gets teleported in there. And his teacher, who drinks a lot, um, he, uh, his, he gets these superpowers when he's sober. So, like, he can run really fast and, like, pick up rocks and, like, super strong. And uh, that's his superpower. Another girl can see past like illusions, and like it's just again another one of those fun. It's almost like that Tenchi Muyo, Muyo kind of like feeling to it. But this is that, basically Konosuba before it was Konosuba. Sure, basically Konosuba kind of more makes fun of like Sao though. Yeah. Um. So uh, El Hazard, um, Read or Die. If you ever seen that, it's a really yeah. good one. Movie's great. TV series is pretty good too. Um. The movie is still my favorite. I love the movie. Yeah. Uh, any of the Macross stuff, especially uh, recently. I mean, Macross Delta was kind of whatever, but Macross Frontier, the two movies that they did, were they basically recap everything in the TV series, so you had to watch the whole TV series. Great stuff. Um, oh, geez. I mean, I have tons of anime, and I actually gave Sam a bunch of them um, just because I had too many, and I knew I was never going to watch ever again. Um, yeah, I, I sent it on Snapchat to Danny. I was like, look at all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I got all this from like, Mario. Whoa, what is all that? <laughs> Be jealous. Um, I knew I could just, like, read off a list if I actually went through all my, like, DVDs right now. Um, Wolf Children, I'm sure, like, in all the, all his <laughs> films, you know. That. I love that movie. That yeah. movie is, like, my soul. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, wolves are my spirit animal, so, like, I, that really... For sure, and not yeah. only that, I have like a really close bond with my mom, so like that that like right hit me even harder. So I was just like, oh, it cries, <laughs> why? <laughs> right, that movie <laughs> fucked me. I fucking love that movie. I love that so, movie. So yeah. basically, Marmar, anything you said during the show, and then your recommendations now is what you would. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I'll give you a list later, and you can tweet it out or something, and you can say this. Okay, this is Word. My list. we'll that put like an awesome idea. So yeah. we'll put video revive link in the description below. So go check that out. Give a sub if you want, and then um, I'll put Mario's list of recommendations in the show notes as well in the YouTube description. So then you can look at those and put them on your plan to watch on your my anime list. Um, Mario, thank you. Yes, thank you so much for hanging with us. Yeah, cool. Sorry, cool. sorry Nick blast. wasn't here. No, he, I would have made fun of him the whole time, and then we wouldn't get anything <laughs> I done. Mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't think Salmon or I would have minded that at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, it's been great. I mean, I really appreciate it, guys. I'm always at your disposal if you ever need anything in the future. Um, so you guys are great. I hope you continue doing this, and um, thanks for listening. Yay. Thanks, Mario. I love you. I love you too, man. So, everybody, y'all know what it is. I've been your favorite bitch, Sam, and your other favorite bitch, Danny, and the the unstoppable old school and new school brother from, another like, mother? another mother, but it's, like, my aunt, so it's, like, so legit. So it's still family. <laughs> so it's still fam. Yeah. Mario, Super Mario, not Super Mario. Super Jumpman Mario. He likes to eat the poisonous mushrooms. I don't know why. <laughs> I'll be fine. And, Just give me a few hours. Just, you know. <laughs> and we've been the Anime Summit Podcast. Bye. Bye.